Now, I'm, I'm here today to share some of the lessons from my state. I think the main question that needs to be answered this weekend is, why does America need conservatives? Now, the question of why America needs conservatives can be or answered by just mentioning one single year, and that year is 2020. Now, everybody knows that almost overnight, we went from a roaring economy to a tragic nationwide shutdown. By the beginning of 2020, President Trump had created 7 million new American jobs. We had the lowest unemployment rate in over half a century, and unemployment rates for black, Hispanic, and Asian Americans reached the lowest levels in history. More than 10 million people had been lifted out of poverty and out of welfare, and all of that changed in March. Now, most governors shut down their states. What followed was record unemployment, businesses closed, most schools were shuttered, and communities suffered, and the U.S. economy came to an immediate halt. Now, let me be clear. COVID didn't crush the economy. Government crushed the economy. And then, just as quickly, government turned around and held itself out as the savior. And frankly, the Treasury Department can't print money fast enough to keep up with Congress's wish list. But not everyone has followed this path. For those of you who don't know, South Dakota is the only state in America that never ordered a single business or church to close. We never instituted a shelter-in-place order. We never mandated that people wear masks. We never even defined what an essential business is, because I don't believe that governors have the authority to tell you that your business isn't essential. Now, South Dakota schools are no different than schools everywhere else in America. But we approached the pandemic differently. From the earliest days of the pandemic, our priority was the students, their well-being, and their education. When it was time to go back to school in the fall, we put our kids in the classroom. Teachers, administrators, parents, and the students themselves were of one mind to make things work for our children. And the best way to do that was in the classroom. Now, in South Dakota, I provided all of the information that we had to our people, and then I trusted them to make the best decisions for themselves, for their families, and in turn, their communities. We never focused on the case numbers. Instead, we kept our eye on hospital capacity. Now, Dr. Fauci, he told me that on my worst day, I'd have 10,000 patients in the hospital. On our worst day, we had a little over 600. Now. I don't, I don't know if you agree with me, but Dr. Fauci is wrong a lot. <laughs> Even in a pandemic, public health policy needs to take into account people's economic and social well-being. Daily needs still need to be met. People need to keep a roof over their heads. They need to feed their families. And they still need purpose. They need their dignity. Now, my administration resisted the call for virus control at the expense of everything else. We looked at the science, the data, and the facts, and then we took a balanced approach. Truthfully, I never thought that the decisions that I was making were going to be unique. I thought that there would be more who would follow basic conservative principles. But I guess I was wrong. Ask yourself this question. How far will people go to enforce mask mandates? Once you start lockdowns, how long can you sustain them 